Welcome everyone to our first Zoom supporters evening. At least we cannot be accused of not keeping up with the times and with new technology, which allows me to say hello to people from around the world, if any choose to join us from the furthest part of the globe. I don't suppose we have people from India or Zambia, but at least it could have been possible and I'm sure we have friends from many parts of the UK without the hazard of braving the motorways now getting busier than ever. So welcome to everyone. When I first began to travel to Zambia and India, it was a very different age of technology. I used to sleep in a mud hut in Zambia where there was no electricity I used to sleep uh, with where there was no electricity, no telephone, when communication was by word of mouth and passed on by whoever we got to know was going somewhere. Yes, there was radio communication if you were fortunate enough to have the equipment and be in a good radio area. The main and the largest shop in the capital city, Lusaka, was where you not only could buy some groceries, Irish potatoes, if you were lucky, and bread, if you were prepared to join the long queue. I remember once being most embarrassed when they tried to move me up the queue because I was British. But also you could buy pockets of cement. Yes, that is what it has long been called, pockets, not packets. And together with your corrugated iron sheets and other essential things, they were all available in the one shop. The printing equipment that I introduced was easy to get hold of in the UK because it was the only now being phased out in the UK old letterpress lead type that could be used in Zambia. What a change from today. Now everyone in Zambia seems to have the latest mobile phones, huge supermarket stores, solar power, water pumped from newly dug wells, far better sanitation than they could ever have imagined, and even the possibility of zooming to join us in the UK and of course still pockets of cement but now from special storehouses and the same of course is true in India but here there is still more of a class or caste ethos still to contend with. So in a moment we're going to hear some of the changes that we here in the UK have had the privilege of being the conduit for making better the lives of those we seek to assist. And yes, some of it is in the field of better technology, but most in the straightforward everyday quality of life in health and education to our less fortunate brothers and sisters. But before we do so, would you please join me in a prayer of thanks to God. Let's all pray. Creator God, who hung the stars in space, who created the atmosphere in which we are able to breathe and live, who endowed us with brains and an ever-growing knowledge to fathom how to improve the lives of our fellow men, and we thank you for this wisdom and for working through us to create better living conditions for those in India and Zambia, where you have led us to work through our charity, Health Help International. So, Father, help us, please, never to forget that it is you who leads and guides and makes possible the generosity of our still growing band of supporters who so regularly give of their own sustenance to make possible better conditions for those who need a helping hand in spirit, health, wealth 
and even new technology. And we pray this in the name of Jesus, your Son, and even our Redeemer. Amen. And now I hand you over to the irrepressible Jute, who will, I know, inspire us with some of the latest work in Zambia.